Hey, what's up YouTube? In this quick video, we're gonna take a look at a few things you can do right after installing iOS 12. So we're gonna do a hands-on demo of a few things, one being Memoji, which is essentially an Animoji of your face. Secondly, we're gonna take a look at Apple's first augmented reality app called Measure. And third, this is a hidden feature found within iOS 12 that a lot of people I don't think know about, and that is the brand new Do Not Disturb features found within iOS 12. All right, first up, let's talk about Memoji. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering what the hell a Memoji is. Well, here's what Apple had to say about it. We wanted to take Animoji even further. So I'm thrilled today to announce the arrival of the era of Memoji. With Memoji, you can create your very own personalized Animoji. These Animoji can look like you or the real you. And We've worked hard to build a deep set of customization options to let our customers create an incredibly diverse set of Memoji. It's really incredible what you can create. Anyway, so that's what we're taking a look at today. So to get started, let's go and head into our messages app and go to start a new conversation if none are available. Basically, you're gonna go to your app bar and select and emoji. Now, if you just recently set up your device on iOS 12, you may receive this splash screen. Just hit continue. You can select one of the Animojis that Apple has already built in. But anyway, to get back into Memoji and actually create one, you can hit this little plus icon right here. Get this little splash screen if you've never created one before and just click get started. And then from here, you can just begin selecting your skin tone. Um, but basically just begin to fill out the entire Memoji exactly how you want it. And you guys see there's a ton of stuff to choose from. And starting with the skin tone, that is just the tip of the iceberg. All right, so that's a good start that I quickly put together. Um, last category again is headwear. Once you're done, just select done up in the top right. Now, once you're back here on the home screen right next to all the other Animojis, and you have, your, of course, your Me Emoji, now you can begin sending them off to friends and creating them. Uh, you can actually create a new Memoji by swiping to the left. I saw that. And then you can also edit the current settings of your current Memoji or just duplicate it as well by pressing that button right there. So to begin recording and sending it off to friends, you definitely want to have somebody uh, selected right there that you're going to send it to. Then you can click the little record button in the bottom. Now you've started recording your Memoji animation here to stop and confirm it. Just click the stop button. It will preview it and then to send it off right there, just click the blue send button and it's currently sending the Memoji and right there it pops up in the chat. It's currently muted, but uh, as you guys can see, I have got it from myself on my other phone and I can actually open it up and watch it as well. So that looks pretty sweet. Fun little thing to do to send to friends and all. Now another awesome thing that you can do in both the Messages app as well as the FaceTime app is use your Animoji with the camera. Basically it places the Animoji or the Memoji in this case on top of your face. So to get started in the Messages app for example, you can click the camera icon right there. You can flip the camera around so it sees your own face. Click this little star button right there, down at the bottom, and then navigate to Memoji or Animoji, excuse me. You'll get this splash screen, which just looks awesome as well. And you can go ahead and select which one you want to use. Of course, there's all of Apple's defaults, as well as your own Memoji that we just created. So once we have this all set up, we pick the Animoji or Memoji in this case we want to use. And just click out of the X button right there. So once we're back here, we can do pretty much whatever we want now with all of our other third party apps or just adding filters. I believe this is the vivid filter right now. And you can even add text, which looks pretty sweet and uh, move it around and it oh it follows you interesting that's kind of cool um and now we can go back to taking a photo and now we can send this off to our friends if we want to and uh that will immediately send it in the conversation <laughs> anyway that is the thing you can do with memoji if you really want to the last thing i wanted to check out was what memojis look like in facetime so all right minor technical difficulties um yeah, there we go. So let me just pull up this guy right here and I'll go to Memoji and let's see what happens. No way. This phone's on, on iOS 11 even and it works perfectly fine. That is crazy. So iOS 12, iOS 11. So this is pretty ridiculous having your Memoji over FaceTime. It even is going to this phone with iOS 11. Ow, 
that sounds awful. I wish there was a way to mute my mic right now, but it's not working. Anyway, uh, we can go ahead and exit out of that. Again, you can add filters, again, um, to make it look even more crazy. Uh, let's see, how do we get out of this screen now? Not like that. So that right there is just the editing tab. And then you click it again and it goes back to your regular uh, FaceTime. Anyway, I'm done looking at my face, so I'm going to end this call. Um, that is pretty much a Memoji on FaceTime. And that was pretty sweet. It was a little confusing at first, definitely, to figure out what all the buttons do. Um, but overall, that was pretty cool how well that worked. Within FaceTime, again, all these Memoji things within the Messages app as well. That was pretty sweet. So. Overall, I'm not going to lie, I really enjoy this. I'm sure uh, once I get the hang of it a little bit better, I will use this quite a bit more often to uh, send to friends, basically. And that's cool that you can still send this when you are on iOS 12 and your other friends are on iOS 11, but realistically, with how fast people upgrade, I'm sure everyone's going to be on iOS 12 that isn't jailbroken pretty soon. So if you guys are brand new to iOS 12, you may not have even noticed that there is a new stock app directly from Apple called Measure. Now this is an AR app, which essentially lets you measure things around your room or environment. Now there've been many third party apps. I actually did a review on some of those in the past that do a similar thing, but now we have a stock one directly from Apple. So in this example, you can just set a couple points and it looks like my desk is four feet and eight inches. I'm gonna do a little comparison with an actual tape measure to see how close this is in just a second. But another thing you can do is actually just point at an object that's rectangular or square and get the dimensions of it just like my Apple keyboard right here or my computer monitor, for example. Another awesome thing is you can take a quick screenshot noting the dimensions so you can send it off or save it for yourself for later use. Now the last little hidden feature of this app is there's actually a built-in level as well as a tape measure. Now the level is actually pretty damn accurate because it's using the iPhone's accelerometer, but I will say the measuring is not 100% yet. Um, I ended up measuring my desk with a tape measure and it ended up being 59 inches instead of 58. So that is that. This is the measure app. Again, you can just add a point by clicking this plus button on the right to take a screenshot. It's up in the top right. And then you can backtrace one step in the bottom left or clear the entire board in the top left. So one of the major new features in iOS 12 is Do Not Disturb. It's been completely revolutionized and redesigned. So here's a quick bit of background information directly from Apple. If you guys want to see some of the latest new features, then I'll be right back and we're going to jump into this hands on and do a demo. And today we're announcing a comprehensive set of built in features to help you limit distraction, focus, and understand how you're spending your time. Now it starts with do not disturb. Sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and you look at your phone, maybe just to check the time, and you're confronted with something like this. And so we're introducing do not disturb during bedtime, where all you'll see is this. And in the morning, yeah. And we made it easier than ever to use do not disturb because now we have a great new mode where when you press into do not disturb and control center, you can set an ending time for Do Not Disturb for when you leave a particular location or when an event ends on your calendar. So I think we're all gonna be using Do Not Disturb a bunch more. All right, so just like the video said, you can swipe down on the control center, you have Do Not Disturb, you can toggle it on just like you would, but now when you force touch on this, uh, you get these options right here. You can turn it on for just an hour until tomorrow morning or wait until you leave your current location. So that's a quick way to get into Do Not Disturb. If you head into the settings app also and go down to the new Do Not Disturb category, you can toggle it right there. You can uh, turn it on to be scheduled from 10 to 7 or during bedtime. And again, you can set up bedtime directly within the clock app itself. This is the splash screen you'll receive before bedtime is set up. You can click get started, uh, schedule when you'd like to wake up, what days of the week you're going to use this feature, uh, how many hours of sleep do you get each night, and then when you would like to be reminded to go to bed. And then the very last one is just setting your ringtone or what you want to hear when you wake up and you have a couple options right there. Again, all these settings, if you've already set it up, can be readjusted with options 
right there. So that is bedtime and it works directly with do not disturb now. Um, a couple more options is you can choose when you want your phone to be silenced. You can allow certain calls from your favorites or other contacts. If you get two calls in a row, then the second one will go through and uh, the do not disturb while driving options at the very bottom. Anyway, that's a quick look at do not disturb for iOS 12. Let's go ahead and check out what uh, the bedtime reminders look like real fast. It's 6.55 right now. I have it set for seven o'clock at bedtime and to wake up at 7.05. So I'm just gonna let it do its thing and we'll take a look at what the results are once it's completed. So it actually looks pretty sweet. So once Do Not Disturb was enabled and I went back to the lock screen and tried to wake my device, I was greeted with this screen. And then once my alarm went off, I could quickly dismiss the alarm and was greeted with this nice good evening splash screen as well. Again, to get out of that, I could just click dismiss right here at the bottom. And now if I had any notifications, they would all show up right here. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe, like. Those are some of my favorite new features found within iOS 12. Thank you so much for watching, but until next time, this is Tony, signing out.